and welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Steam and Events. Thank you so much everyone for taking the time out and being here today. I'm Shreya Devakran, the Assistant Program Manager of Steam and Events team and your host for today. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. We'll be running the live Q&A at the end of the panel discussion, so feel free to submit your questions and do make sure that you share your name and company name as well. Now, without further ado, let me introduce our esteemed panelists for today. We're joined by Mr. Gaurav Mehta, Director of Priya Blue Industries Private Limited, India. Mr. Gaurav Mehta is the son of Mr. Sanjay P. Mehta, who established Priya Blue Industries, one of the largest and greenest ship recycling facilities of India, and Best Oasis Limited Incorporated in the year 2009. They are involved in the trade of cash buying ships and offshore assets for recycling purposes. Within the Asian subcontinent, lot V1 of Priya Blue Industries is regarded as the first green yard to be certified by Class NK under Hong Kong Convention and even the first green yard audited by European Union of Sustainable Ship Recycling for Wilds by Clist Inclusion. Welcome, Mr. Mehta. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Mr. Arif Rashid Dar, Director of Venture Green Recyclers from Pakistan. With an extensive career in ship recycling, ship breaking industry spanning over 40 years, Mr. Dar has successfully dealt with over 1,000 vessels while heading SP Department of Dharman Maritime Trading and has been an active shipbreaker for the past 20 years, being the CEO of Venture Green Recyclers. VGR has the capacity of demolish 2,000 and 100 LWT ships per annum, 200,000, uh, sorry, 2 lakh LWT ship recycle, uh, ships per annum. In addition to his steel businesses, he is the vice chairman of Pakistan Shipbreakers Association and member of the executive committee of Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industries. Welcome, Mr. Dar. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Mr. Sartaj M. Imran, Deputy Managing Director of Simni Ship Recycling Industries from Bangladesh. Mr. Imran commenced on his work life from an early age of 13 during the year 2006 by shadowing his father, Mr. Mohammed Imran, Managing Director of Simni. His official work took place as part-time and around 2008, he involved himself in their ship recycling wing. He chose to go abroad for higher education and did his college in London, followed by an uneducated undergraduate in LLB from the University of Westminster. Upon returning to Bangladesh, he took charge of his family business of ship recycling with the initiative, initiative of developing it into a fully compliant green ship recycling yard. Welcome, Mr. Imran. Thank you. And also joining us today is Captain Siddharth Derashri, Director of Natrans Ship Management Private Limited India. Captain Siddharth specializes in demolition voyages and reactivation of dead vessels. He holds 20 years of sea experience and 10 years as a master mariner, commanding more than 50 vessels for beaching recycling for the steel industry. At Natrans, in the past two years, he has led a team which has handled about 50 vessels for Best Oasis Limited. Some of them involved an extensive amount of tank cleaning, remarking, and some laid up for several years was reactivated in a short time and beached for recycling. MacTran specializes in technically challenging projects and ensures to keep the cost of delivery to a minimum in order to get the best value for the client. Welcome, Captain Siddharth. Thank you. Thank you. We're thrilled to have uh, all of our panelists joining us today to discuss the outlook of South Asian shipbreaking industry. To moderate this panel discussion, we have our analyst for global ferrous scrap market, Akshay Sharma. And with this introduction, I'm passing on the session to Akshay. Akshay, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to all our uh, panelists. So um, today's uh, panel discussion is uh, on the topic of uh, outlook of South Asian shipbreaking industry. And uh, as we all know, in the global shipbreaking market, South Asia has often been uh, referred to as the world ship scrapping yard, with uh, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan collectively processing around 73% of the total scrap vessel uh, globally uh, in the last 12 months. And uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic happening earlier this year and uh, the recent turn of events because of that, 
the prices for scrap vessels have uh, plunged down to record low levels of four to five years low. Uh, and uh, because there, so, uh, in a, for the discussion of the theme, uh, let us uh, listen to all all the uh, experts from uh, all the three South Asian markets and uh, ship management firm come together. And uh, the uh, pointers that we will be discussing in today's uh, panel discussion will be, you know, the impact of uh, pandemic on the industry, demand supply scenario, labor issues, and other such issues. Uh, new policies coming up, shift to green recycling, and price scenario and outlook for second half of 2020. So to start with, uh, Mr. Gaurav Mehta, uh, what was the uh, impact of uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic on the South Asian recycling industry from uh, uh, March and April month? Uh, can you elaborate on that? I would like to first elaborate about the Indian market. Uh, we have seen that the prices have come down by about 110 USD per metric ton for per long term for a ship in uh, India today. The prices prior the COVID-19 were about four. Uh, 420 for a container and today you can see about 300 305 for a good container vessel uh, larger sizes and the same has happened across the board for also for the bulkers uh, about 100 and 110 dollars and also for the tankers uh, as you may have seen that in the past uh, in the last few days there has been a lot of storage uh, for tankers and that's the reason the tankers were not coming in but uh, from the latest news i hear today is uh, the VLCC markets have come down quite drastically. So we may see a few tankers also coming in. And uh, rest uh, for Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh also the situation remains quite uh, quite bad, uh, where uh, the, sale pro the sale is a real difficulty for at least India and Bangladesh, whereas Pakistan seems to be one of the good markets in today's time, where most of the buyers uh, remain. Uh, in India, we also have a lot of labor, labor issues uh, for which... Uh, the more, there is going to be less and less demand for scrap, scrap for the time being. And if the labor is returned on time, we may see a little bit of an upward in the coming. So, uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Mr. Mehta, uh, Mr. Arif Dad, would you like to uh, you know, um, put some light on the Pakistan situation, uh, how it was impacted uh, due to the pandemic uh, starting from March? Yes. Uh, basically, uh, we are buying vessels for scrapping, which means we are buying scrap in the shape of ships. So this is quite relative with the international prices of all kinds of ferro scraps, which includes multiple in shape of bundle scrap, shredded scrap, or HMS 1 and 2. Now, as I said, it is very much interlinked with the price structure of international scrap so while we were dealing in 2017 and 18 year there was a quite high price levels they were ranging between 450 to 500 dollars a ton per lightweight and now they have dropped in this march april months basically due to reason of this covid 19. in pakistan there is total consumption annually of about 6 million tons of long steel products, out of which normally Gadani produces about 1.5 million tons at higher levels or normally at about 1 million to 1.2 million annually. Now, after this epidemic, COVID-19, the industry of this construction has dropped drastically not only the builders who make buildings or structures privately but the contribution by the government of pakistan by way of the development has been lowered down drastically because of this situation uh, i can safely say that about 50% of consumption has been reduced of these long products. Due to this, now the capacity of the mills installed for recycling uh, this our mill, this mill plate or rerollable material has gone down. And uh, we foresee this situation to persist for at least another six to eight months. 
uh, not earlier than first half of 2021, we'll see any improvement. Before that, it will be very, very difficult. Same situation I feel in the region, our Indo-Pakistan, Bangladesh, where the activities are low, because one reason in India, as I understand, is very few laborers are available, mostly have gone to their villages. Same here in Pakistan. Also in this time of the year, there is a cutting of agricultural crops and usually they move back to their villages, the laborers. So now it's two reasons, the COVID-19 and this uh, cutting of the for these uh, farmings. So uh, it will affect further and uh, I don't think so that it will be revived by end of this year, early next 2021. Although this is the situation over here due to COVID, but before than that, in 2018-19, Pakistan was quite behind if we compare with India and Bangladesh in tonnage importing, because locally the shredded scrap was available or imported scrap was available at much lower rates if you compare with the costing of the rollable material which you obtain from the ship breaking. So overall situation, is quite depressed and it will take certainly some time to revive back. Thank you, sir. And uh, now uh, moving to uh, Mr. Sattar Imran, uh, would you like to put some light on uh, Bangladesh situation, uh, how it got impacted due to the pandemic? Uh, sure, sir. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, everyone because it's, very, it's a very big thing for me to be in a panel with such great figures of the industry. Mr. Arifdar and Mr. Gaurav Mehta. And also I would like to inform everyone that uh, we Simni actually, our ship selling site, Simni Shipping Lines Limited, we represent Mr. Gaurav Mehta's best oasis in Bangladesh. Um, and in terms of ship recycling, uh, yes, this year of 2019-20 uh, uh, has not been very good for Bangladesh. And of course, the COVID situation has made it worse. Uh, this year, Bangladesh has relatively demolished much less vessels uh, until uh, March. So March 2020, we have done around 1,500, uh, 1.5 million tons. And, but during uh, April and May, there was no import due to the COVID lockdown, but just in June, we have imported uh, more than 300,000 tons. So that's uh, quite a lot for one month. Uh, but the current uh, scenario is bad because the vessels we imported during the early stage of the year, all the vessels were for, uh, around close to 400 levels, 400 USD per metric ton. But now, currently, we are buying vessels for three hundred thousand. Uh, sorry, uh, three hundred dollars. So this is basically because the local market is not supporting us, because the government was working on big mega projects uh, in the country. But now, due to the pandemic, all the works have shut down. All the works have slowed. Shut down. You can say shut down at the moment. They have paused. So there's no uh, steel consumption in the country basically at the moment and as mr Arifdar said even in pakistan i think is the same situation because he said uh for the next two years he's uh, assuming that uh, we're gonna face the problem even in bangladesh we're gonna face the same problem like for at least till end of 2021 we're assuming we're gonna go through a very rough time so i hope the government also is trying to support us. So let's see what happens. We can only hope for the best. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, now, uh, Mr. Siddharth, uh, we would like to know, uh, you know how was the transportation and uh, delivery of the previously booked vessel before the COVID-19 happened? So uh, uh, how was the transportation and delivery of those vessels impacted uh, during March and April months uh, to South Asian months? Well, Akshay, it was uh, indeed a nightmare uh, and end of the day, owners, so cash buyers, they suffered uh, massive losses due to this delays and, you know, uncertainty 
initially when when the you know the things started stopping or you know uh, all over the world the ports starting getting shut or the airlines were not operating it was a bit of a confusion then how will this lead forward in coming weeks so basically the only option was wait and watch however after a certain period of time you know it takes a lot of money to hold a vessel uh, to almost cost 5000 dollars a day to hold one medium sized ship so i mean irrespective of the you know the size i mean it, it, it you know the more or less the cost it, it you know basically when we talk about whether the vessel is 5000 ldt or 50000 ldt the operating cost is more or less same in terms of crew and food and fresh water bunker is one one factor which you know changes the dynamics a bit but more or less it's uh, you know generally calculated to 5000 dollars a day so we were i mean uh, i mean i'm talking about when when i say make trans i'm talking Uh, about best choices because we work exclusively for them uh, that we are holding ships about five six ships everywhere in uh, various parts of the world wherever we could convenient you know provide the provisions to the crew and water and you know basic essentials and um, it took almost a delay of say at least a couple of months on every ship till we could actually the yards uh, started opening and there was some you know uh, the levels uh, got to a level i mean the to the the minimum market price which is right now right now at 300 dollars a ton more or less here and there in different countries but uh, the another challenge was at the same time not just with delivery of the of the maintaining the vessels or delaying the vessels or holding the vessels the challenge the bigger challenge was repatriation of the crew because we could be had to actually wanted to send a lot of vessels to pakistan as the market was relatively better but we could not because there was no no site how we will be able to repatriate our crew back home and uh, as you uh, i would like to inform you that most of the crew is from india when the ships are coming whether they are going to chittagong or pakistan for that matter the crew nationality which is used uh, is indian most of the time so you are coming uh, taking the crew getting the crew back from pakistan or chittagong was almost impossible so even uh, the owners had to suffer uh, on the price but there was no option other than taking the vessel to alan but uh, let's see we are hoping the situation uh, situation will improve very soon the airports are opening now but end of the day you know the price has to stabilize in and as everyone is saying here that uh, to, i mean 2020 is going to be and not just in shipping actually to be honest it's everywhere now it's in every every industry every sector it's a very very volatile not just uh, business wise but it's a different world altogether it started uh, now uh, focusing more on the uh, migrant worker and the labor issue So, uh, Mr. Mehta, we would uh, like to know from you. Uh, as as you know, uh, the labor shortage is not just in shipbreaking industry; in all the other industries also, labor shortage is being uh, currently being faced uh, because uh, the because of the transport of uh, workers uh, last month to their native places. Uh, I, we would like to know how is the situation right now, and is there any improvement in the labor uh, condition in comparison to the previous month? Uh, so, what had happened is that uh, during the start of the pandemic, uh, we uh the ship recycling association of india at least uh, and all the ship breakers in india had paid for the salary for the months of uh, march and april in complete uh, fully to the laborers even at not at the minimum prices but at their ongoing wages uh, thereafter uh, the uh, government for some reason had started the trains uh, to take them back to their uh, hometown even though most of the laborers were ready to stay back but because of the panic which was created due to the covid 19 uh, covid 19 most of the people wanted to go back to their family and for that reason uh, at the moment you can say that in most of the yards there are only about 30 to 40 laborers whereas each yard would have at least minimum of 150 to 200 laborers working for them so the situation is quite uh, bad at the moment but we we do see that uh, the the main main heads of the recycling uh, industry are coming back like the they are uh, you know the the ones who are actually cutting who are explaining the labors to cut the vessels they are called the masters so they are coming back slowly so we do expect that the mukadams will get their people back uh, maybe in a period of one month time the trains are reviving back also slowly from their hometowns but maybe once in a week but still people the fear still remains in the people and therefore we do not we do not expect the labor to come before at least a month's time also the ongoing season for crop is making it even more worse because in general also they do go during this season and also during the 
summers back to their home for either for marriages or for the cutting of uh, you know the farm farming activity. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, Mr. Arif, that uh, we would like to uh, have an outlook on the uh, import uh, of vessel, the demand for the sea by the ship recyclers in Pakistan uh, for the coming months. How, how is the demand uh, by uh, by the recyclers affected? And uh, in comparison to the last year, uh, where do you see the uh, demand in the coming months of 2020? I feel the demand will be substantial. The reason is presently we are quite close with a differential of that meritable scrap, shredded scrap, which is now trading last day, it was at about $275 per ton CNF Karachi or Bin Qasem. If there is a difference about $40 to $30 or $50 maximum remains in between the price of recycler ships and shredded or bundled scrap, then our industries have good chance to have their share in the long product market but if it goes beyond 50 dollars then we are not there to compete with them this is one of the basic reasons why we couldn't do much business during 1819 2018 2019 period because markets have gone so close between ship and shredded price that the difference is very high ships were at about 100 dollars higher then the shredded scrap. So the industry of your remeltable industry having sufficient reasons and their costing is quite reasonable for them to push their product in the market rather be able to provide our product of re-rollable material or meltable scrap to the furnaces or re-rolling mills. But now after this gap has shortened and there is a demand and we have not much stock left at, in Gadani yards and the revival is there. And while I was talking yesterday with one of the big groups like you were, were having some webinar with the Mughal Steel uh, last time or something. So same sort of company, I was sitting with them and uh, they, they, they are having now one third of their production. Their everyday production, daily production was about 750 tons of rebars, which now they are producing only 250 or 200 tons. So this gives us an edge, ship breaking an edge, to again produce our product for the rolling mills. And there is a quite good chance. But if the prices go beyond 325, like we have recently paid, paid the most highest levels of prices in subcontinent we have paid up to three thirty dollar three twenty five dollar for container ships plus there is uh, one very big reason that uh, uh, indians can get cheap vessels they have developed hkc compliant yards with nk class and they are getting cheap drainage no less than 10 to 20 dollars difference what we have to pay but there is some tonnage like they have to go to yards which are not uh, so-called green yard yet, like in Bangladesh or Pakistan. But there is a substantial tonnage is to come to Pakistan for demolition in coming months. I am sure about it. All right, thank you. Uh, now, um, uh, we would like to know from Mr. Sardar Jindran. Uh, so where do you see the demand for a sh a shipyard scrap by the steel manufacturers in Bangladesh? and other end users uh, presently uh, as the COVID-19 cases uh, are still rising in Bangladesh as well as the other markets. So uh, how is the demand scenario uh, for shipyard scrap, which is an alternative to the imported scrap in Bangladesh? Uh, shipyard scraps at the moment, um, I would say um, the imports are more now, uh, but from shipyards, what's, what's happening is that all the shipyards have uh, stocks in all of their yards. Most of them have like a lot of stocks and the uh, mills are not really taking much because most of the mills are still closed and slowly they're actually opening up. Most of the mills had slowed down their, either slowed down their operations or closed for the last two, three months, but now they're slowly opening up. So uh, they are sort of taking our 
products. But still, I would say the amount of ships that have come in recently, just this month itself, more than 300,000 tons, uh, it's not going to be good for us uh, because the prices for us, it's going to go down further. Uh, uh, Mr. Mehta, uh, uh, would you like to elaborate on the uh, Indian market, uh, in the Alag market, uh, how is the demand scenario? Uh, so, uh, with the prices at these levels, what has happened is that the other markets, except for Alag, uh, the closer by mills have opened up. So, we now are selling our material even to Rajasthan or far off places up to UP. Uh, so, the, this is giving a little bit of a boost to the industry, but it remains to be seen that uh, if the labor shortage still remains uh, at all the at all the states in uh, India, then uh, the markets may uh, become a bit weaker. But uh, at, at the present status and time, uh, there is at least a good hope to, uh, with other markets being able to be supplied on that the markets will remain stable. Also, the scrap markets, which was uh, which is quite high compared to our uh, uh, compared to the ship recycle the ships prices, because generally there is always a thirty to forty dollar gap between the ship price to to the scrap price. Uh, and at the moment, the ship price and the scrap price is more or less similar, only with a gap of ten dollars or twenty dollars. So, uh, if this remains for a longer period of time, it may be on the bright it may be a bright side for the ship recycler. Uh, all right. Uh, now, uh, we, this question is for uh, all the panelists. Uh, uh, it has been uh, recently observed that uh, uh, sc new uh, scrap ship vessels are being uh, diverted from the Chittagong port, uh, Bangladesh, to uh, Alang port as well as uh, Kadani port uh, on uh, you know on, on account of better deal, better pricing. So, uh, can can uh, you highlight on that, either Minister Ari or Mr. Mehta? Uh, diversion of uh, vessels from uh, Bangladesh to Kadani uh, uh, and uh, Alang port. No, this has been on only only on a few cases. This is because during the start when uh, COVID nine that Bangladesh has opened up, uh, that time they were facing some major issues regarding the letter of credit. So most of the uh, sh uh, ship owners wanted to divert their ships to Alangor to uh, Pakistan, where the credit was not a big issue. The rest of uh, rest of the times, most of the vessels are still. Uh, still, which are coming from the China, from China, are going to Chittagong only, and the vessels which are on the east of near Suez or east of Suez are coming to India or uh, uh, India or that. Uh, basically, uh, in Pakistan and Bangladesh, uh, we choose to buy the bigger tonnage, like VLOCCs and VLCCs. Uh, the more attractive tonnage for Indians are. Uh, the container vessels. Uh, because of their local pricing of the scrap they obtain from the container vessels and the non ferrous contents, they pay higher prices for such kind of tonnage. Whereas we are always eager to buy VLCCs or VLOCs or bulkers or capes, a bigger tonnage of 15,000 plus lightweight bulkers or caves are always better for us because of our local circumstances we can get more re-rollable material better re-rollable material from these kind of ships however most of this tonnage is coming from far east not from west so far east while they are coming from far east the first is chitogram where they can sell their ships and uh, by uh, ballasting cost or other cost involved for the delivery on ballast uh, it will be about five dollars or sometimes more higher to deliver pakistan than to bangladesh if coming from the east but it also depends if the owner himself is the actual owner himself is delivering then he cuts his cost but if cash buyer buys as is where is then he has to get insured, he has to put the crew, joining cost, another cost, his cost would be higher than the original owners if he delivers. So, uh, in some cases, uh, some vessels uh, did come to Pakistan from Bangladesh and most recently 
many about couple of vessels uh, came from uh, India to Pakistan. Those are container vessels because they got better price from India. Uh, I don't want to name any ship, but a ship of about 20,000 tons was sold about to 315 or 16 dollars to Indians, and later on it was sold about 324 to Karachi. So handsome difference, and the voyage is only two days. Crew is there, bunkers are there. Karachi port cost is less if you compare with uh, Bangladesh and India. Plus, well, she's ready, she goes straight to the beach. Whereas in India and Bangladesh, you have to wait for a couple of days or a week, depending on the date of arrival for the beaching to conduct. So uh, sometimes it happens, and sometimes it did happen also from Karachi, a vessel has gone to uh, India or even Fijora, which is only two days away from Karachi, wise wise, but three and a half days from Alang, vessel goes all the way to Bangladesh. Uh, before this epidemic in last year, there are a couple of ships, uh, big ones, VLCCs, VLOCC, and CAPES, who were there, but they went all the way to Chittagong. It all depends economic, what the economic conditions uh, at the recipient end. So it happens like this. All right. Just the same way what uh, Ms. Sharif said, Bangladesh and Pakistan, they're in, interested in big vessels. Uh, just like only this month, uh, there were six VLCCs that were that came into Bangladesh. All were close to 40 or more than 40,000 tons. And as he said, Pakistan is, yes, they're giving high prices for vessels. Suppose just recently, a small tonnage around 6,000 tons that was around, uh, uh, that was in Sri Lanka. But uh, Bangladesh, I think the highest dollar from Bangladesh was around 310, but it went to Pakistan for 320. So $10 is a lot for such a small vessel. So it went to Pakistan right away, just recently. And um, in Bangladesh, uh, there's only one green ship recycling yard, that's PHP. So in terms of that, most of the green ships that come into the market they head to India instead of Bangladesh because, of course, PHP only one, uh, one yard, they can't have much. But for Bangladesh, one good thing is that uh, most of these ship recycling yards have taken the initiative of turning into green yard. Uh, around fifth, uh, we have around one, uh, one four, 20 yards. Uh, uh, of 120, around 90 yards are currently active, fully active. And out of that, already 50 plus yards have their SRFPs, ship, uh, ship recycling facil facility plan, approved by the Ministry of Industries. So we are soon, uh, hopefully we are aiming within the next two years, we'll have more green ship re recycling yards in Bangladesh, hopefully more than close to 20 or 30 ship recycling yards, green ship yeah. recycling. So uh, and then they will be able to take the advantage of a better better pricing. Uh, and, yes. Uh, so uh, now moving on uh, to uh, Mr. Siddharth, uh, from the uh, month of February and March, uh, was there any change in the process of uh, ship inspection at the origin countries like South Korea, etc., with the rising cases over there, and uh, did it impact the overall business? Uh, this uh, industry is basically uh, just like most of the industries is very customer oriented, customer focused. Uh, so the the I mean when when you talk about the other difficulties what we face as a manager or representing a cash buyer and taking over a vessel or handing over a vessel inspections or and so on the logistics basically this all basically you know is is, is a very small factor when you talk about the end price the the situation for the recycler at the recycler's yeah end so however having said that see if there is no demand there is you know there's no point in conducting inspections or buying ship, but if there is demand, then you know the price will always take care of it. That uh, the Pakistan, I mean, Pakistani market will give, and if we can repatriate the crew, say top dollar, then the other uh, two countries, then uh, you know the cost of uh, such you know uh, operational stuff is you know negligible. However, having said that, you know it it. Uh, there was a tremendous impact on, on inspections, uh, on crew connections, basically more than inspection. See, 
for infection we can always send some local nationality without i mean someone traveling all the way from india or or wherever but uh, we can always find people technically sound people in the local countries the country of origin from where the vessel is uh, <clears throat> available for sale but uh, if we cannot correct the crew then then you know that's a bigger problem which we have been facing in the last uh, say last two months or so even uh, for repatriation the, the, i mean uh, i can I, I, we have experienced that you know the owners spending a fortune and getting the crew back uh, very big amount i am talking about i'll not put the figures here but um, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars just to get people back on a charter flight it uh, changes the dynamics of the project tremendously so more than the inspection it's it's you know the execution of the project the taking over of the vessel and also as i said earlier that when we hand over the vessel to pakistan we don't know how we'll get the crew back but hopefully now things are i think the the worst is behind us in terms of you know the uncertainty the market of course uh, you know gentlemen here will know better and they have already you know informed us but uh, in terms of the uncertainty the volatility it's i, be, I believe the worst is behind us and we can see in the next couple of weeks things improving and then the local uh, demand will you know dictate the market all right yes, you're right it is a big issue the so repatriation of the crew uh, but uh, mr siddharth most recently a vessel ship uh, beached at gadani and uh, there were some indian crew as well and those have been repatriated but as you said uh, rightly there was a charter flight from karachi to bombay and uh, fortunately uh, the shipping agent get hold of some uh, seats in that airplane and uh, as what uh, just uh, uh, went this is way otherwise uh, a ship has been uh, beached and uh, the crew is meant to go to manila and the route uh, we were having two options one is karachi abu dhabi abu dhabi to amsterdam and amsterdam to manila and the other route was available karachi dubai dubai chicago chicago montreal montreal to manila and the cost of economy class fare was 3200 dollars per ticket so this is a very very big strain on the sellers uh, cost wise as well as time wise because generally the crew is allowed to stay uh, in a country for 72 hours on their cdc uh, but for that particular i was i am quoting the crew was on board the ship after beaching for a week and then 3 days in a hotel and after 10 days flown back to their destination so it, it it is it it is one of very big issues of due to this pandemic of 19 covid 19 and uh, but it will be resolved gradually we hope so and some flights are started locally and internationally as well but sometimes they delay sometimes they cancel because uh, uh, they cannot meet the schedules due to many reasons uh short of passengers many time although the the, the capacity of a aeroplane is 200 and they are just putting their 125 because of this distancing and uh, even though they do, won't get 30 passengers or 40 then they uh, are compelled to cancel the flight scheduled flights so this is what is happening a lot of all right you by your insight uh, now we will focus more on the uh, price price scenario and price output so starting with uh, mr neta Uh, you know, uh, it has been uh, observed that uh, prices for all the three types of units have, uh, uh, you know, uh, plunged uh, around three hundred dollars per LGT and below that mark uh, in India. For the this has happened, I think, for the first time since the ship recycling recession that was that happened in two thousand fifteen. So, will the prices continue to fall or will it recover in the coming months? What is your outlook on that? I don't have a crystal ball with me. By the way, uh, I would have bought most of the vessels, and uh, I would have not bought any uh, single vessel, or I would have bought all the vessels available in the market. But uh, personally, uh, India may may see a little bit of a further uh, further lowering down of the prices because of the uh, ships like car carriers or the odd vessels like the offshore segments. these kind of ships which are very slow to recycle 
so these yards will take more even more time now because of the labor shortage than they would have taken in general so the yards will start slowly slowly start becoming full and by say if if the present situation uh, remains where in lot of the container vessels and now slowly the tankers start coming in then india may be full by end of july mid or mid august uh, and will again start start buying say uh, in uh, sub- only in october november because uh, till the time these kind of uh, difficult uh, ships are not recycled uh, the yard will not have the financial cap- capacity to buy and also the yards in india are very small they are only 30 meter 60 meter or 120 meters so this may remain as a challenging time for india but uh, this may also give give a lot of opportunities to the breakers to pick and choose which yeah which vessel to take all right sir uh, so moving on uh, mr kartaj indra uh, the uh, prices for uh, you know uh, ship yard scrap they have also uh, seen a decline in, in bangladesh if you see that shape of market so ship yard scrap uh, uh, has uh, fallen uh, i think around 27000 uh, bgt uh, rec- recently uh, from the 29000 and uh, 30000 level uh, before the whole thing so can you elaborate uh, what the reason for the same is it because of the uh, falling uh, prices of scrap vessel and uh, how how will the market react to this uh yes mr akshay so prices have soared uh quite a lot not just 30 because um pricing is basically we do it with two items that's one is the plate another is melting scraps melting scraps just uh before pandemic around uh beginning of the year around january it was around 34000 taka and now they went down to today it's 27400 taka so that's almost a difference of 8000 and also plates um in january they were around um close to 40000 i would say 39000 40000 now plates are 32500 or 32200 highest i think it's going for 32000 500 yeah so that's a very big difference as you can see and i got a question uh, anonymous question it says why even during this pandemic bangladesh is taking so much tonnages so it's basically because um as in first quarter of the year bangladesh already bought a lot of tonnage and all the tonnages were close to 400 dollars three you say 380 dollars 400 dollars above 400 dollars and now as the local market is not supporting them as i've told you there there's a price difference of 10000 taka per ton so now they uh, bring in more tonnage to basically average the cost the loss but now what we are basically worried about is that even in the next few months or uh, one year i would say one or one and a half years we are we don't really expect our uh, market to get any better so in this policy that we are trying to apply of averaging the lo- uh, losses it might actually average us that's what we are scared about you know because maybe in a next few months we have to bring in more tonnages so that to average the current uh, scenario that we are going through so this is not just the end of it maybe in a few months we'll again start taking in such big tonnages okay uh, thank you sir and uh, uh, you know now moving on to pakistan uh, mr arif sir uh, some good news in the budget annual budget this year uh, has been announced uh, this is uh, you know presented uh, recently that uh, the income taxes uh, will be reduced uh, from 4.5 to 2% melting scrap prices for the import have been reduced from 5% to 2% Custom duties uh, on the import of ships have also been slashed from 2% to 0%. So, how will this uh, impact the overall uh, import scenario uh, and uh, the local uh, scrap prices scenario in uh, Pakistan? Can you elaborate on this? Thing? Before 2018-19 budget, the 4.5% income tax was our final liability. They have not to ask any other. more income tax to pay 
that is to be considered our full and final ability which pay which we pay at the stage of import as with the holding tax but last year they have kept 4.5 percent as it is but this is as a minimum liability in fact if you make more money you make more profits then you go beyond 4.5 percent which you have paid then you have to pay further if you have not um, made such uh, profits that it equates 4.5 percent age of the income tax then you make not claim because this is the minimum tax so it was a big anomaly uh, basically also due to the all other steel factors like furnaces re-rolling mills etc they were having uh, withholding tax at the import stage of about one percent to two percent and which is also adjustable and on top of that there is another tax which is known as turnover tax which is levied on re-rollers and the smelters and they they makes profits in books to such extent that the one percent which they pay at the as a turnover tax equates to their liability and they claim for one percent withholding or two percent withholding which they pay at the impost stage so this was a great anomaly for us shipbreakers so we were pursuing our case for this uh, to be equate or it should be even field for everyone so in this budget they have become uh, come with a 12 schedule of income tax under section 2 so we come at par with 2% but this is the minimum liability and we have to file the return with our accounts and if there is some adjustments we have to pay uh, one another thing there is a, a cd uh, uh, extra CD, uh, custom duty of 2%, which was levied on us as well as melters, melting scrap, and re rollers. So that has also been abolished. So this 2% and 2.5%, 4% have gone. So this gave also a good edge. But as I said earlier, the basic reason of revival in Pakistan is the difference between the meltable scrap internationally and the ship prices. As you must have seen, steel mint quoting so many directions of the price in the worldwide. Recently, if you compare week to week or to compare month to month, you have seen the prices of bundled scrap, the HMS 1 and 2, the shredded, all has come down from 5 to 5 to 7 percent almost because they touched 300 now it's rolling at about 272 last day as i said there was a cargo book for pakistan 5000 tons in containers at 272 and it was previously went up to 300 so five percent about is five to seven percent is decrease and further it seems uh, it will go further down basically because the reason uh, is the scrap has to be sold as a scrap for remelting the ship if shipping revives you can run the ship for some time but scrap has to be sold for scrap so since the consumption worldwide is lower so the prices will further depress or at least they will not go further beyond these levels so it will be better for us as well and uh, if the uh, ship's price remain at around 325 it will good for us and uh, there will be opportunity for shipbreakers in Pakistan to buy more tonnage. And there are quite a number of yards are open. And uh, uh, I am uh, confident quite a number of ships will be sold in coming weeks. And uh, if the price remains around the same levels. Uh, now, coming uh, towards uh, discussing about uh, green recycling, uh, Mr. Mehta, uh, you know, many of the uh, uh, ship recyclers in India have already shifted or are in the process of shifting towards uh, green recycling in line with the Hong Kong Convention guidelines. So, can you uh, highlight uh, what proportion of the uh, ship recyclers now in India have uh, been, uh, have transitioned to green recycling and how many years does it take uh, for, for the uh, same the shift? Uh, Mr. Mehta. Uh, yeah, so to explain you a bit about green recycling, there are about uh, three different classes who are uh, classification societies who are at the moment doing the 
certification for Hong Kong Convention, which is which was the rule passed in the year 2009, and uh, this was also confirmed by our Parliament very very recently in the last year. So I, uh, it has been now a compulsory thing to be done within the next five years that all the yards have to be HKC. The good part about it is that India had started it uh, very much uh, much before most of the other recycling destinations in the world. Uh, one of the yard uh, which we are presently owning, Priya Blue, was the first yard to become a HKC compliant yard and also to become the first yard with class NK as well. The class NK, uh, there are so basically three classes, class NK, RENA and IRS. So class NK is, is uh, at uh, the helm of, uh, of green recycling. So they are considered as the best class. Thereafter, uh, we, can, we see as RENA and then thereafter uh, IRS. Most of both the classes come under the same purview, but people still prefer to have RENA over IRS. Uh, it takes about, uh, depending on which class you want to go up to, uh, what kind of green do you want to go up to? So there is an unlimited amount of time, uh, uh, unlimited uh, uh, developments which you can do in green recycling. But as per the classification society, I can say that for a class NK yard, it will take about one, one and a half year to become a class NK yard compliant. Uh, for arena, about three to four months and same for IRS as well. But for all the classes now, the, the, the regulations are becoming stricter and the they make sure that they can see at least one full ship being recycled under their class supervision and thereafter they give a certificate of compliance. All right. uh, at the moment, about out of the 120 yards in India, uh, say about 100 yards would be in wo are working and out of that at least uh, 70 to 80 yards have already received uh, HKC. All right. 70 to 80% have already. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. that's and uh, Mr. Sardar, uh, as you mentioned regarding Bangladesh, uh, as of now only one uh, ship recycling yard is uh, green recycling compliant as PHP, but uh, most of them have already been working towards that. So by when can we uh, have majority of the major ship recycling yards you know, turning to green recycling? And uh, also if you could highlight what are the benefits that uh, they will be receiving uh, once they become uh, compliant with this. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that um, um, now we have uh, just one green, uh, fully compliant green yard, but uh, to get majority, it's going to take some time because even this COVID situation, it's, uh, it has slowed down things. Um, I think within the next five years, if five years should be okay for uh, most of the yards to turn into green. And one advantage that we have in Bangladesh uh, is that uh, Bangladesh yards are much bigger compared to um, Indian yards. Uh, and one other uh, advantage we have is that we can beach a lot of vessels side by side, as well as one behind another in Bangladesh, which I think um, in India, I think Mr. Gaurav Mehta can uh, 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 tell us, I think it's not possible in India to beach uh, a lot of vessels at a time, which is possible in Bangladesh. So if Bangladesh can uh, produce m more green yards, it's going to be a good future for Bangladesh. And um, <clears throat> suppose uh, one more thing I would I'd like to bring into limelight is that the generation before us, like our fathers who were uh, handling yards, uh, there was a time even 10 years ago when they didn't really bother much about you know the conditions of the yards or whatsoever. But now, it's not just the new generation, us, even our fathers, the uh, generation before us, they have changed their mentality. So they have a very positive mentality of, you know, uh, uh, like uh, doing as much as possible, uh, even in terms of the workforce, the labors, the basically keeping the environment safe overall. Even though we are not green yet, but our yard setups are not bad at the moment, they have improved drastically over the last 10 years. Um, and after seeing PHP, uh, which is handled by Mr. Zahir, uh, if you enter the yard, you're gonna feel like you're in a first world country. You, can, you won't say that this is Bangladesh, to be honest. So after seeing that, 
even the other ship breakers, uh, ship recyclers, I would say, I wouldn't say ship breakers, ship recyclers, all of us, we have changed our mentality. And we're like, we have to go to the next step, uh, next, next stage. And we are following PHP basically. So yes, uh, we see a bright future if Bangladesh can go into more ship recycling, uh, green ship recycling yards. Yes, yes. Uh, I was saying that, uh, can you highlight that, uh, are there any new uh, changes that are coming up in the next few years with uh, regards to the ship inspection process and the logistics and transportation uh, process, uh, which will be in, uh, beneficial to the overall industry? Uh, any technological changes or anything as such? Well, uh, it's not about inspection or, or uh, changes per se, but mainly it's about the IMO regulations. The IMO is the governing body for shipping industry, as uh, we all are aware. But yeah, the new SDU regulations keep coming into place. You know, all the ship owners and all, all the, I mean, it depends on the age of the fleet. It's not uh, practically viable, you know, at times to convert it to the, and, and maintain the latest regulations. Have the new fittings and the new, you know, uh, basically uh, equipment should be fitted. The cost is not viable. And, and of course, it benefits the recycling industry end of the day. Uh, the real latest one was uh, the fuel oil, uh, the very low sulfur fuel oil uh, regulation, which came into place and impl was implemented from the 31st of March eventually. And I mean, the deadline was 1st of January initially. But the but right now, uh, it is it is you know no no ship can uh, run on heavy fuel oil as early as they used to till you know the end of 2019. So that is uh, made that that made a big difference. But because of the latest uh, Stimulus oil market, uh, the oil is not so expensive as, as it used to be till say four or five months back. But there are new regulations that which keep coming in. There is ballast water management and it takes about almost a million dollars to fit a ballast water system to comply with this regulation on a, on a decent sized waste mix or a decent sized vessel. So one million dollars is a big cost, especially when a ship is about say 10, 12 or 15 years old. It is at times viable or practical to send her to a recycling yard instead of putting that kind of money in a vessel which has got another four or five years left hardly. So of course, at the end of the day benefits the shipping industry, which is uh, the recycling industry rather, sorry. So uh, I think uh, 2021 will be all about ballast water management and VLSFO, which is not uh, the prices of oil in particular, is uh, expected or, or is forecasted rather to you know come back to its earlier levels, say about uh, plus $50 a barrel in the next say three four months or so once the storage you know and all around the world is, is you know about to be consumed then the prices will come up and then the vns of effect will again be there for the ship owners to run their ship on on the more sophisticated oil and to bring that machinery or to put a scrubber on a on, on an engine it's not an easy task it's not a cheap uh, cheap thing to do it, it takes a lot of a lot of big amount of money and Pride docking and you know it's it's which will eventually benefit the recycling industry in a big way. So 2000, but right now the tumultuous market conditions are are you know uh, game of the day. They're the, the talk of the time. So once we are out of COVID, we'll actually we'll be able to figure out how much it has benefit the recycling industry, which will, in my opinion, it, it will be a big benefit for the recyclers. All right. So uh, now we will be moving on to the audience question and uh, the. Uh, I will be asking each of the panelists the questions that have been asked uh, by our participants. Earlier. So first uh, question is for uh, Mr. Arif Dar. Uh, so, uh, for Pakistan, uh, uh, will the Chinese imports increase due to the economic corridor? How will uh, this impact and what will be the uh, timeline for the same? This is asked by Mr. Arjun Banerjee. Uh, the CPEC and uh, Chinese economic corridor uh, the development for those particular projects like roads, bridges, industrial areas, uh, these uh, power projects or some industries. Uh, the steel is used in those projects to some extent is definitely imported from China directly <laughs> due to some agreements with China, but in overall, these projects will give a good boost to the steel industry in Pakistan, not only steel industry, but other allied projects as well. 
because of this CPEC reason, there have been coming up about six, seven more projects, each of about half a million or plus production per year, which are units of uh, uh, this continuous uh, casting and continuous re-rolling with furnaces re-rolling mills. So there is a good impact in the on the economy of Pakistan regeneration and expansion with the CPEC project. Uh, yeah, another question for uh, another question is uh, for Mr. Sardar Imran from Mr. Abhijit Mahanta. He he wants to know uh, you know what percentage of ship dating scrap uh, goes for uh, melting into the steel plants in Bangladesh because the steel plants in Bangladesh you know they use a combination of imported scrap as well as uh, shipyard melting scrap. So what percentage of ship breaking scrap goes into um, uh, melting of steel? Um, most of the mills in Bangladesh now, they prefer imports over the goods from ship recycling yards because of course they can enjoy uh, benefits of LCs, uh, letter of credit, they get uh, debit payments 360 days. So that's one good point they use. Uh, uh, for importing scraps instead of taking from the local yards. And uh, most of the uh, mills in Bangladesh are now turning into automatic. So that's one more thing. And only the semi-automatic mills, they now prefer uh, taking goods from our ship recycling yards. Okay. So it's actually going down slowly. The percentage is decreasing now. Yes. Okay. So, uh, our next audience question is uh, for Mr. Gaurav Mehta. Uh, this question is from Shailesh Pala. Uh, he's asking uh, how has the insurance market changed due to the COVID-19? Uh, new clauses are uh, getting uh, updated and industry reaction. Since it's uh, impossible to evaluate the COVID on the recycling day. Yeah, so, as you know that uh, our maritime sector uh, needs insurance at uh, the foremost because we are doing voyages from X place to Y place uh, for, uh, for a big amount of money and uh, if the ships are uninsured, uh, we use for, uh, for insurance most of the time. There have been few past incidents to, uh, for which reason the uh, premiums have gone much higher. Uh, on the COVID-19 front, there are there is no such insurance which covers the the owner that uh, in case the ship recycler is failing to to be uh, to for us to deliver the vessel to the ship recycler due to COVID-19 or is there any uh, you know there is there is no kind of a setback for us in case. Uh, uh, we are not able to clear the vessel due to COVID-19 or if the crew is also COVID-19 tested. Uh, now the insurance after after this has happened, the insurance, at least the P and I have now agreed to include COVID-19 as as a part of their insurance in case the crew members have uh, have been found tested, uh, tested positive and they are also now agreeing to allow the quarantine to be counted, uh, counted inside as a claim towards the P&I. The regulations are still not, not favoring anything for a cash buyer uh, who basically does, does a one voyage. But for the ship owner, there, is, there has been some good news also and some bad news also because the premiums uh, are steadily rising. Uh, another question for you, uh, Mr. Mehta. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Vedin Arsen of uh, Indica Group. Uh, he wants to know uh, what is the ferrous uh, metal scrap contribution quantitatively by the ship recycling industry to the steel manufacturers as uh, melting scrap. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we we do not get uh, as much as amount of melting scrap as much as we get for plates. I do not have the exact figures on way on what basis how much uh, uh, steel scrap is going. To, to the nearby mills. Uh, but I can tell you on an average that each yard on a daily basis would be getting about uh, 30 tons to 40 tons of steel scrap only uh, for uh, selling each day. So you can ca calculate about 100 yards doing 30 tons is about 3,000 tons a day. And on a monthly basis, about 90,000 tons. 90,000. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Arif Dad, you would also like to 
uh, you know put some light on this uh, regards to pakistan industry how what is the quantity uh, that uh, ship ship recyclers in pakistan supply uh, as a, as a melting scrap to the steel manufacturers in pakistan uh, as i said normally we import 1.2 to 1.3 million tons annually per lightweight ships out of that as we are buying uh, bigger vessels we are getting less uh, the meltable scrap from those ships and this is one of the reason that we are buying bigger ships to get better priced product that is rerollable material but in overall you can say about annually we are giving them about 200000 tons of meltable scrap from the ship breaking yards 200000 tons and uh, we have uh, another question for uh, mr sataj uh, this is an anonymous question uh, uh, how would you uh, comment uh, on the domestic availability of uh, imported ferrous material as opposed to domestic available uh, available uh, material that is plucked from the uh, you know uh, ship recycling so the comparison between the availability of uh, ship recycling scrap as as to uh, imported scrap in bangladesh uh imported scraps are of course coming in in big quantities uh it's uh the quantities are going up daily basis you can say because uh now before um, scraps would only come in in containers but now there are many com- uh, cargoes coming in bulks and uh, yes okay okay so imported scrap availability is more uh, yes, right yes, yes compared to the ship ship design. yes and uh, another question from mr mehta uh, many many yards in uh, india were already hcc compliant even before india Uh, according to the recycling ship act 2019 so uh, post this uh, act uh, are there any actual gains in terms of purchase price which we have witnessed because of uh, um, many are already uh, hkc compliant yeah. so if yes then approximately uh, you can can you highlight on the benefit see as i explained to you there is a uh, difference in the systems on how you which which your uh, classification society you have for your yard for uh, say for the class nk yards yes there has been a benefit for the other uh, other classes there has not been so a lot of benefit but it also depends on how you are keeping your yard how many uh, if if your yard has been accepted by the larger carriers like mol nyk uh, k line uh, if they are accepted by by these uh, carriers then most probably yes uh, at the moment here uh, they are uh, enjoying a fantastic margin uh, compared to before uh, it also lot of it depends on the demand and supply I means there is a good supply right now so not just the hkc ads who are, are enjoying a good time but also the non hkc ads are also enjoying the good time the general gap depends on uh, the classification society but uh, an average gap of 10 usd for long term should be the case for a hkc yard and a non hkc yard on an average 10 dollars yeah and another question for mr arif da uh, this question is from mr temur ali khan this uh, is i would like to have uh, mr da's opinion over the argument that whether rd should be placed on a, a plate and reusable material to increase the competitiveness in the local pellet manufacturing as uh, put forth by uh, palsp Uh, the government is emphasizing, and we back it completely, to support the local industry. Uh, there are two reasons uh, to put RD on the rerollable scrap, because uh, the rerollable scrap is being imported is of various kinds. They are pipes in two cut pieces. They are girders. They are channels. They are all sort of other so. kind of material dismantled bridges dismantled structures the quality of that scrap is not in consistency whereas the scrap you obtain from the ship breaking it's of a consistent quality and a good quality to just uh, give an edge Uh, to ship breaking industry and other local industry government has put rd and uh, we we feel it is a good uh, decision to keep rd there on billets uh, to just support the local uh, furnaces rerollable material to support the ship breaking 
because it's an uh, uh, incentive to the laborers to consume labor force over there and uh, employers. So it is better for uh, any country who is developing their uh, basic industries to make such kind of uh, efforts. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, last audience question that we have uh, is for uh, Mr. Gaurav Mehta. So, uh, uh, Mr. Kylie Yoon uh, wants to know, uh, or he wants to have a price outlook uh, for the scrap business in the future. He wants to know uh, when do you all uh, expect the price will be restored up to $400 level for the scrap business? Uh, see, uh, we at least for the time being, we don't see the scrap markets to go in 400 region. Uh, what we can see if they remain at these levels is also quite healthy. We just have to hope that it doesn't go below these levels. Uh, the last time when this level that reach were in 2009, but thereafter 2008 9 where thereafter the markets had picked up quite a lot because there there was a reason of only financial problems. Right now. There is not this financial problem, but we also have a have a disease which uh, no one knows when there will be a cure for it. So once there is a cure a cure in place, would the market be in a situation to improve far faster and uh, improve much better than what it is right now? Until that time, we don't have a proper uh, proper medicine for this uh, for the COVID-19. I don't see the market to be moving further ahead than what it is right. Now. All right. So with that, we come to the end of the audience question and uh, we will be concluding the webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to Thank all the panelists and the Thank participants. You everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. It looks like Thanks, we have everybody. covered most of our questions for today's session. Gentlemen, is there anything else any of you wanted to cover before we wrap up for today? Would any of you like to share something else apart from the panel discussion that has been done today? I'll just say good luck and stay healthy. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Captain Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 so much to all, to all our esteemed panelists for joining us today. Last but not the least, we'd also like to extend our appreciation to Mr. Rajveer Sethi from Priya Blue Industries for his immense help in recommending today's session. On that note, I'll take everyone's sleep for today. Do stay tuned to Steelmint events for the latest webinars and podcasts, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you very much.